All right, fantastic. Welcome back. We are still hanging out with us right here on Why in the Morning. Just in case you have no idea, this is the last segment. And today being MCM, it's all about Monday and it's all about Manto. But today we are doing it differently. We're talking about how to actually survive in the ghetto streets of Canairo. <laughs> Not the ghetto. Canairo, I don't think if Canairo is the ghetto. But you can say maybe there are specific places. Ghetto meaning like, hey, there are places and you can survive. And the, uh, the, the conversation today is centered on have you ever gotten scammed? Uh, have you heard of a story or have you gone through it yourself? And what is the worst that possibly happened? And if it happened, yes, uh, was there money involved? Was it property? And how did you navigate through that? There's always something common about, uh, especially persons that are job hunting. I don't know why it usually targets a lot of people who are job hunting. So you're going to tell me on that hashtag, which is why in the morning. And uh, before we get too far, I have two powerful guests in the studio with us today, uh, a lady and a gentleman. But you can interact with us on that hashtag, which is why in the morning, as I get the correct names. Uh, so on my minute right, she is Charlene Omondi. She's a communication student from Daystar University. She'll be definitely telling us what's her experience and what exactly she's all about as well. And then next to her is Ali Idi Kiboe. Hopefully I've gotten that name right. She, uh, he, where? He, she. <laughs> you must be very careful. He's from CASA. Uh, he's going to tell us what that abbreviation uh, means and maybe what he's all about as well. First of all, good morning, Shaling and uh, Edie. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you guys feeling? <laughs> you look tense. <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling good. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, good morning to you as well. Good morning to you, Brad. Um, I feel amazing. Thank you yeah. for having me this morning. You're welcome. Let me start with you, Shalene, ladies first. Uh, you can basically introduce yourself, tell us what you do, what you do at Daystar. <laughs> Are there any other things that we need to know? And then we can get to you, Edie. Uh, thank you for having me. You're my welcome. name is Shalene Omondi, a communication student at Daystar University. I'm in my fourth year, and my major is corporate communication and marketing. Uh -huh. So what I basically do in school is obviously studying yeah. and I'm so much involved in leadership. Uh, yeah. So I've taken several leadership positions in school because I have a passion in such things. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm one person who's always like determined to, um, to focus on the welfare of students and people around me. Yeah. yeah so that's basically all about me. Oh, amazing. Okay. Women rep very soon. <laughs> <laughs> women rep on my MCA. Either way, I'm a member of parliament here. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you, Idi? So, my name is Ali Idi Kibwe. I am a student from the Cooperative University of Kenya uh, doing business information technology under the year 2.2. But of course, I'm also a leader under the current student association that is the Secretary General. But of course, also, I am the national chair of all Muslim university students, male and female. Uh -huh. But of course, I'm a leader also under the umbrella of uh, student leadership nationally and the KUSO. And of course, I'm also a youth uh, leader, an advocate for economical youth empowerment and youth inclusion in political parties and governance and leadership. Those are a lot of titles, bro. <laughs> I don't even balance those. So, like, those are a lot of careers in one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the passion in leadership and uh, having been able, to, I've been, been growing uh, from a very humble background here in Kamukunji, you know, I've, I've sort of like uh, a lot of challenges in where I'm coming from. And of course, the, the urge to be able to lead a lot of youth and uh, like-minded students who are coming from vulnerable families. Yeah. Uh, that has, has actually pushed me to be able to, to, to find a passion in leadership so yeah. that we can be able to change the dynamics and create opportunities for all of us and for the better mental of this future. That's, uh, that's my passion. That's why a lot of my entitles and colleagues are really focused in the leadership space. All right. Yeah. And I love that both of you guys are like leaders and communications in Indonesia, <laughs> uh, one on one, yes. uh, from Martin Luther King Jr. and the rest. Anyways, let's back, let's get back to the topic at hand. Still on that leadership note, you know, as you're leading people, people yeah. are going through experiences in life, and I love the, the fact that today's topic talks about you know people losing property, being scammed. Nini, nini. Um, from a university perspective <coughs> or a student's perspective, are there maybe possible stories that you guys have heard of a friend telling you when they nilienda kwa audition kidogo kidogo? After thou, the people disappeared, and then we are making the call. They're saying, you know, the number is, not, in fact, the number does not even exist, <laughs> but at first it can exist. I can start with you, Shalin. Uh, I can't say that I've been scammed in such ways, uh -huh. but I've been coined in town with this method of the, someone dropping an envelope. Uh -huh. So that was my first time getting scammed, and it was really, it gave me trauma, something like that. Wow. 
Yeah, mm. so uh, I was basically just walking around town, going to get uh, my glasses and going yeah. to do a few shopping for, for myself. So I was walking and this man bumped into me and I saw that he dropped something. Yeah. So I ignored him and I, continu I continued walking. Right. Uh, so it was behind uh, Ambassador Nia Chicken Inn. Yeah. So as I was walking, I was like, oh, I'm so hungry. Let me go to Chicken Inn and see if yeah. I can get something to eat. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that this man was following me. Like intentionally? Yeah. He had targeted yeah, you? Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, he kept saying, ah, you look like a nice person. So I really want to share this money with you. So yeah. I just ignored him and I, continue, I continued walking. So I went, uh, I found a really long line at Chicken Inn. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I can't stand this. I'm, I'm in a hurry, so let me go to the, the Tuskies. No, Tuskies, oh, the, the one which was closed. Ball. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, the, and then there was this security woman. She kept telling me, I'm Rambo Siende, Siende Baki too. Uh, and from the from queue you were yeah, at yeah, yeah. Uh, Chicken Inn. Yeah. Okay. So today I usually tell myself maybe that was God telling me because if yeah. I had if I had listened to that woman, to woman yeah. yeah I wouldn't have been conned. So uh -huh. I, I left there na kiburiangu saying maybe like, hey, line. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, as I was just walking, this man came again and uh -huh. he was like, uh, I found this envelope and yeah. I want us to share the money. So it was these envelopes with the transparent thing so yeah. you can see you money can see inside. inside yeah. And he even removed a receipt from the bank and he mm. was like... Was it like a bunch of notes? Yeah, yeah. Like, bunch. if you see it, it's like... Thousands. Uh, yeah, a bundle, up. yeah. Okay. But uh, the money that was up there, it was a hundred shillings. So mm. I assumed that they were just bundles of a hundred shillings. 100. So he removed the receipt and he was like... It seems like someone was from the bank to collect money, uh, yeah. around 70,000 shillings. Uh -huh. And he dropped it. Okay. And s and I was just walking and I saw that you look like a calm person, a nice person, and yeah. I wanted to, to share the money with you. Yeah. So uh, he he opened it, he showed me, and you know, it was around 2021, 2020. I mm. was still naive, I had just joined, joined university, you know, and right. I was still mm. finding my way through town. Right. So um, I gave in. And you accepted was, the offer too. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was even planning the things I'm going to, to buy because that at that time people were having these trendy shoes, you want to buy them but yeah. you can't afford. Mm -hmm. So so he said, you'll, ta you'll take 20,000 and I'll take 50,000. And I was yeah. like, that's a good deal. 20,000, yeah. Nahi economy, I'm going to take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he told me, go to Tuskies to the section where uh, there are clothes and go into the changing rooms and divide the money. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> well, before this conversation escalated to that, at uh, yeah. what point, where were you standing while we these were, things were being exchanged? Uh, we were, how did you know, before you, you cross the road to Tuskies, uh -huh. just in the middle there. The middle, yeah. yeah uh -huh. uh, just uh, behind There's like Arkeves. a crossover from uh, towards Arkeves and then back to like, Mo is it Moya Avenue? No, not that side. No, uh -huh. this other side. Right. Behind Arkeves. Almost stage your matter to Zaruga yeah. and Ambassador. Uh, okay. I don't know how to explain sure, sure, it. Sure, I'm sure, not sure. good with directions. Okay. Yeah, so it was just like... Standing uh, now beside Yeah, the yeah, road. we were just standing. On yeah. the street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, he told me, okay, so I told him, okay, let's go. So we crossed the road and we were outside Tuskis. And then he changed his mind. He was like, no, don't go there because there are CCTV cameras. So I was like, oh, this person sounds so genuine. And one thing I noticed, he was so fluent, like he sounded like someone who's literate, he has gone to school, he really had nice English, like Hunga yeah. Amini, he's a scammer. Yeah. And dress he was code. nicely dressed, dress. yeah. Like suit and tie, or just casual official? Just casual, but he was neat. Okay. So I was like, this person can't scam me. Yeah. So um, I took the envelope and he told me, Bef before you take this envelope, you need to give me something because I don't trust you, we've just met. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like from him giving you the money to now yeah. you giving him something. Yeah, so it's like, uh -huh. it's like uh, he's risking. Mm -hmm. So I told him, what should I leave you with? He said, uh, your bag or anything. And then mm -hmm. I was supposed to meet a friend and he called me and I told him, uh, I'm already in town, I'll call you back. And then this man tells me, even switch your phone and give it to me. 
Are you sure this girl is not using some sort of powers, juju, or uh, kamote or something? I don't understand because there's a point where I was resisting. I was telling myself, no, th this can't be real. And then something just made me like give. A give given real yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. And your mind, your conscience, it can dig in. I w yeah, I was like just okay. Like you're all okay. in body, yeah, mind, yeah. soul. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Proceed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Something told me, no, don't give in. Then something tells me, ah, 20,000, that's an, a good money. And when someone tells you, you, you seem like a nice person, because people tell me that yeah. I, I look like a nice person, this right. person must be genuine. And you fall for it. I fell for it. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> I gave him uh, my wallet. It had my school ID and my national ID and 5,000 shillings. So... There's this way he was like, I'll go and chokura my wallet. Like yeah. we're in the middle of the road, but this person is just like an afungua my wallet and he's and just everybody's counting the... And passing on the street yeah, looking uh, at you yeah. guys. <laughs> and you're just standing there? Yeah, and it's like maybe these people know that I'm being con, but friend? they can't tell me. Am I your friends? And you my know, people friend? just assume that, you know, could be a boyfriend, a cousin, brother or no, something. No, he was, he was older than, he was like 30 something. Right, you could even tell. I couldn't even age. tell, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, he, he, like, I'll go and my wallet. So greedy, like, you could see how much he wanted that money. It's uh -huh. like he was so desperate. You couldn't jump on him and be like, stop, <laughs> you know, you can't do that to No, I, I just you know, looked at him and I don't know what happened to me that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, he just took the wallet and he was like, he even gave me 10 shillings to go to the public toilet so he told Ten me don't don't, <laughs> don't go to Tuskis, go to the public toilet and you can well, divide the money still has your belongings yeah so i told him i can't give you my phone because there's someone i'm waiting to mm. to receive a call from so he yeah. told me okay so i just gave him the wallet and i remained with my bag and In my phone. my phone mm -hmm. so i ran to the public toilets i gave the money so when I enter the toilet, I'm opening the bag, the yeah. envelope, oh my God. Mm -hmm. There were just a pile of newspapers, like they've been folded so many times to make the envelope heavy. Be bigger. Uh, yeah. Look bigger. So I got out and I was like, Charlene, you, you have been, been scammed. scammed. How? How? Huh. So, <laughs> you know, at that point you're wondering, should I laugh? Should I cry? You don't know what to do. Then yeah. I got out, I was like, Maybe I'll see him running. I didn't see him. So I started telling God, at least even if he's gone with my money, I can drop my IDs. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> now that's when I started, you, you know this meme that says, yeah. uh, uh, my girlfriend's eyes after they've seen my text. Yani right. una town, unaona lakini huoni. Oh, like your eyes are so watery. It's like you're operating in spirit and the rest yeah. are in body. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just walking. I don't know right. what to do. I don't have money in my m -pesa. Mm -hmm. So uh, You're stuck I, now. Yeah, I'm stuck. I go and sit beside a store and this random guy just comes and he sees the envelope and he's like, oh, where when your leo miss Kamiwa? And he laughs. Then I'm like, it's like these guys who are in cahoots. No, no, he, he was just a random person with a shop. So he was like telling me yeah. it's something that usually, usually happens. happens within that area. Yeah, yeah. It's like they know it, but they couldn't tell you. Yeah, know. yeah. It, did you feel betrayed? Like you would have jumped on him and slapped <laughs> him or something? You know? <laughs> no, because he started now telling me stories about how especially females, they get scammed by these people. Even people give out their laptops, their phones. So, mm -hmm. so some of them even ran mad in the middle of the streets. Like right. you can be scammed so bad, you just start screaming. And that guy is such a smooth operator because I can only <laughs> imagine the force this guy had on your mind and your body and your spirit. And he immediately, under Congolese, started submitting to his orders. Like take this envelope, uh, give me your. Uh, as in, I'm stuck at where he told you. Now uh, give me your handbag. Um, the, the, the small pass you had with 5,000 and with your IDs. As in, did he intentionally say, Eboni Pati, Ama? No, he just said, you know, I can't trust you and this is a lot of money, so you, you need to leave me with something so that I know you'll come back. Or at that point, he had already given you the envelope. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're the one holding it. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, 20 Gs, my goodness. <laughs> I'm elevating, nigga. <laughs> yes. So we look in that mindset. <clears throat> yeah. But then um, I'm still also wondering, what was running through your mind? Okay, this stranger you just met, I'm a Kwanza Mekufuata, Sana. 
Uh, there's those people who are extremely sensitive on the stage. As you always, I'd always tell by new markets and at a change like me. Like I'm really watching anyone who's walk, walking beside me. Because when to end that now direction, more than I have to change. To be honest, or let me just pause or pick a phone call or something, because uh, it's that was strange. I make photo kind of chicken in Ukatoka. And you're never scared? <laughs> you, are ne you never felt something that was off with this guy? I don't know if they use something on people. Some I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. I don't but later <laughs> on, did you like uh, come to your senses and be like, goodness, there's probably something. I was like hypnotized and something took over me. Yeah. And now the sober me is going crazy. The moment I saw the newspapers, I was like, oh my God. Like... Because there was a time I wanted to take my wallet back, but I uh, don't know what happened. I just left it with him. Right. So I really don't understand how these people operate. All right, that yeah. must have been juju. <laughs> I, I believe so. <laughs> Let me just believe so. Did you suspect something fishy like, ah, oh, this was not normal? Yeah. You felt like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, what about you, Edi? Yeah, uh, what, what, what's your worst that ever happened? The worst uh, is not uh, that actually the other particular case never happened to me or our school directly, mm -hmm. but of course in line of, uh, of in the student uh, leadership space, uh, we came to realize whereby one of an, an institution was registered and uh, a college, and uh, they were uh, trying to offer a. A international placement program whereby students can be able to go abroad in their respective and choices of country and the yeah. choices of institution to go and further their education. Right. Now when this particular program was all out, uh, a lot of marketing was done and a lot of com a lot of comrades that are students and parents really got on board on that particular initiative and they saw it fit because uh, uh, how, how good to, uh, for, for students to be able to go outside there where they, where they so believe there's greener pasture and a lot of opportunities to to go outside. Though a lot of uh, parents uh, nearly uh, got into the initiative and they started signing up uh, for that particular program. And uh, one case of, uh, uh, if I can remember vividly, they were paying 450,000 Kenya shillings for visa, uh, for the institutional registration, and of course for the flight also and accommodation of the students. Yeah. Now, what country was it? The UK? Or no, it was uh, uh, the application for any choice of your university in any country. Any country. So the college was offering, uh, apparently they say they have a good international relation with the foreign uh, government and foreign institution of learning. And uh, they the county government? Uh, no, the, the country, uh -huh. the governments of outside people. You know, for example, when you go to study in India, you right. m there must be a good uh, relationship because if an institution is offering in placement services abroad, then uh -huh. there is that cultural relationship that they had. So parents uh -huh. bought that idea. And uh, they were actually charging 450 for visa uh, registration of in that particular university and accommodation and uh, also a uh, ticket. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So uh, almost 100, or almost a thousand uh, students uh, who were signed up for that particular uh, initiative, and uh, parents were brought in for orientation also in that particular university, it's actually around here in CBD, which was registered. And uh, they started paying, uh, parents started also looking for loans because, you know, they, they perceive that outside there, there's good education, there's good greener pasture when your child going there. And right. uh, the targets for, for the, 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 these people were targeting those students who are not, who never performed uh, brilliantly in their Kenya certificate of secondary education. Right. Uh, so the, a lot of parents uh, nearly took loans. A lot of parents invested their ad, uh, hand income uh, to this particular program. But unfortunately, after a, th a thousand uh, students students have, have signed up and registered for that. When they were bringing in the application of reforms in this institution, the inner staff uh, saw that there's nothing going on. Now, the director of that particular college was not even processing this particular visas and, of course, accommodation and, and, and school for that is abroad. Yeah. So after some time, parents started raising complaints mm -hmm. about uh, we have paid this money and it's a lot of money and uh, why are we not hearing anything about this particular uh, scholarship from outside abroad or rather where, where, when our student going, where are the visas and of course uh, the director with this scheme also published fake visas and they uh, they gave to the students who have applied and of course some parents also uh, when they were starting out to realize this is not a, a legitimate or a genuine thing uh, they were wondering how can how can we be issued visas and our students our our, our, our children are not being called to embassies to be to be able to be interviewed yeah. so in the long run after after a month or two uh, they they went and uh, uh, they went to the institution only to find out that the, the so-called college has been evicted and it's no longer anymore. Okay. 
So they had to go to the police station to report. And of course, uh, uh, when the, 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 the police division unit that is concerned about uh, identity theft and scam uh, unit, uh, they, they realized almost 180 million shillings. Yeah. have been lost due to the scheme and uh, this particular the person who was the director of that particular uh, institution is nowhere to be seen and i can tell you for a fact that uh, that case still up to now it is yeah. still uh, is it the one that has been in the news headlines recently exactly uh -huh. that case has not been finalized and uh, uh, parents and, and students have gone into devastation in terms of emotional trauma and a lot of money uh, parents are left to pay loans uh, and then and, and there is no specifically answers for that. So basically, it's a very devastating uh, scenario that uh, we never had to experience personally or our institution. But okay. that's one of the many cases that uh, we as, as students and of course as student leaders uh, get to hear that uh, happens within our university and institution around the, around the country. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's a serious one. And <laughs> it, yeah. this one involves parents and our students and our, even some leaders as well. Exactly. But then at some point, uh, I think there was uh, an inquiry task force. Absolutely. That they did, and then they were questioning the person who was facilitating uh, that air travel and the rest of the ticketing. Absolutely. Uh, have they promised to, like, settle uh, the people who are affected? I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an own on and off going battles between the person and not a sort of course and the, also the inquiry the committee that was charged to be able to investigate that particular scenario they have not released any substantial statement to also sort of like uh, please or comfort the, the parents or of course the student or or the compensation. The like yeah. what i've said the case is still uh, under, the, under the investigation and uh, they've got okay. the, the investigation not concluded so okay. we are hoping in the near future that justice and uh, and, and, and of course uh, will be served to these uh, students and of course mm -hmm. compensation uh, completely will be will be given. All right, uh, that's a, that's a serious one. Do yeah. you have a ghetto one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like like, like, <laughs> like <Chalice. laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like that's the serious. Okay, one. Uh, that is yeah. the ghetto yeah. one. If I can, if if I can yeah, bring it uh, home to to a ghetto one, uh, is that you know a lot of comrades in 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 in, 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 in our institutions, particularly me. If I can give a, a honest case, is that one time I was uh, in school and uh, I was studying at home during the time of COVID nineteen. And I remember this particular time whereby uh, you cannot be able to go outside during uh, there was a lot of social distancing and a lot of restriction on the COVID-19 protocol and measures whereby uh, I had a faulty of electricity in our area of building. And unfortunately, the, because of the desperation and, and the ongoing of school programs, uh, we had to look for an, a technician because uh, uh, where we sit, uh, there's no any electrical technician, so we had to be able to call. But of course, after after waiting for call, we decided the one of our guy decided to opt to text the the Kenya Power and Supplying Company via yeah. Twitter. Uh, yeah. So he he, he texted. And they that, respond. Uh, yeah, they responded. They called enough actually. Uh -huh. And when they called, uh, they acted as if they were uh, employees of the KPLC, KPLC. Or agents. Or agents of, uh, of, of, of the KPLC. So uh -huh. they decided, they, they, because uh, we were in the same room, uh, we, were in the same, we were roommates, and then he, I told him to uh, g g put it on a speaker, and then the person decided to take us through. And I said, of course, I've seen you have paid, but of course they have a meter problem. It started to tell us to input uh, numbers and interface to, through our pay bill and um, PESA uh, transaction mode. So as, as we were doing that, uh, he used to give us zero, zero numbers and then other numbers. So yeah. while we were doing that, we were also, you know, sometimes when you send money, you do zero seven. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, when somebody starts with you 007 until four times, you cannot realize if you're sending money to anybody. Uh -huh. So we do 00 and then we do 07 and then uh, the, uh, the rest of the numbers to 10 so that we can. So while we were sending it, we realized that we are sending money to uh, a certain lady called Halima Gocho. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I, Kenyan. I uh, yeah, Kenyan. So I told, I told my friend, why are you sending money? We, we deleted, and yeah. then uh, we deleted. It's sort of like a pay bill. Yeah, a pay bill is a very uh -huh. subscription. In fact, they give even the pay bill of a KPLC. Yeah. So on that particular process, then uh, we, we disconnected the phone because we realized we we're sending somebody, and then he called again. So yeah. calling again, he said, uh, why, "Why have you cancelled the transaction? I've said, we have seen we are sending some we are sending somebody money uh -huh. uh, that is not KPLC." I said, "No problem. I, I, apology. Let me let's go through the whole process again, and then we started again. Right. Then we started again. He told us to go to the input of keyboard and then uh, type uh, a certain number. Uh -huh. 
uh -huh. and then we set a certain number it's like also we're sending money to a certain Another bank account person. number uh -huh. you know so it's uh, it was very tricky and, back and, forth, back, and forth. back and forth and until uh -huh. uh, that i realized mm -hmm. that you know these people are really uh, trying to scam us uh -huh. so due to our assertiveness we disconnected the phone call and uh, we reported the the incident to the to our service line uh, uh -huh. safaricom and then they be they were able to be able to take uh, uh, that particular case on board but of course i've never had an, any case of me being called or rather i have never had been in through an incident of maybe in town like my like, uh, my fellow panelists yeah yeah for sure, of course. It sounds really normal but at the same time <laughs> yeah. really strange yeah i feel like so many people have gone through like uh, your incident i can only imagine now like how many let's say for example if you're new to nairobi you've just arrived from in, in the city capital nairobi <laughs> from ushago and then you meet somebody at the bus station they'll be like when up in in Mm -hmm. I can only imagine how many people per day like go, go through a similar yeah. incident like yours. Now, still on that note, what do you think uh, makes, uh, especially young ladies, or just let's say young people, to be targets of some of these corn artists? Is it because the way you're dressed, am I because of lack of confidence, or uh, you look lost? You know, sometimes there's people, by the way, in town, yeah. they look lost. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also people who are running, they're yeah. walking very fast. And those people who are always cautious like me. <laughs> There's even time with my co-host and I'm like, this, this guy is looking at you. It was a lady actually. She was looking at her for a very long time like, no, Steph. This, this person is looking at you for like 10 minutes just staring at you. You don't know her. What could possibly uh, be wrong with her? And then they picked up a phone. Kumbe, you know, they're planning to do something. So for me, I'm always cautious. I talk in Angalia San, I'm like, no, bro, no. I in San, I buyer, yeah. but no. I'm just like cautious, uh, extra cautious, because, you know, crazy things can happen to you in the street. On that note, what do you think makes people to be vulnerable, especially on the streets, especially right here in Kanairo? Mm, I think they usually look at how you're dressed. It's just the same thing, Vile. you can go to maybe a marketplace like Gikomba and then they judge you by the way you, you, you're, dressed. you're dressed. So yeah. that's how, that the is what will much. determine, yeah, the, the price. price. Yeah. Why? <laughs> but why, Bwana? <laughs> so, me, for example, if you guys go like this, to say, Metisha Tina Uzwa Asombili, Uta Uzwa Punch, Ama Mianane, Ama Miasita. But you can negotiate it down. Bwana se negotiate. You can negotiate still at Akata Kuzi and Awende. You can negotiate, but it won't be as low as someone who will go like dressed Anaka otherwise. Desperate. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so in short, I like pay a fixed price. Be, in fact, cost price is to a t-shirt punch. Okay, and I'm sure sana ni 450 actually I'm seeing. Come on, you can get on 50 morning hours. Wow. So the way you're dressed yeah. really matters a lot. Yeah. What other thing do you think matters before these people target you? Uh, I think because we are young and most of us, especially in Gen Z, we are so desperate to get money and right. to get rich at a young age. Or so, pro progress yeah. in life. Really yeah, fast. yeah. So I think when someone just mentions this certain number of cash that they want to give you, they assume that you'll just give in because you want money, you want to live a lavish life like other people. It's just the same thing like Forex. Yeah. It's just that he in a way. Yeah. So, yeah. But there's that like a, an official way of like doing it. Yeah, so that you don't get scammed. <laughs> Not an official, but Forex you trading? Know, Are you meant Forex trading? Yeah, yeah, I mean Forex trading. Because we've, uh, we've really had some good professionals of <laughs> Forex trading who actually took us through the process. Other than Ile Ngina Sujetu na Tumana 10K and then somebody trades for you. Kidogo Kidogo at Haoko Kenya. In fact, that in your in your Indi, see what okay. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think makes uh, young people to be vulnerable on the street? I'm just a normal monainchi. Uh, picture, picture, picture. I'm saying I talk happy. To say I'm to turn an exit up. Okay, be see say say and that how. Then kidogo kidogo, I'm to another comfortable and photo shallin. What could possibly attract this person to to ask that person? Like I want to agree with my fellow panelists that uh, target for, uh, target profile vulnerability yeah. first is uh, also of, also of gender uh, yeah. because somebody can look at uh, our female friends and our female sisters and then see think that they are not aggressive or rather they are yeah. somewhat submissive in in quotes whereby right. they can be able to control them and they can be able to suppress them into giving in to what their demand. But of course, another thing I think it is also we, we fall victim to these people because of also the high cost of living. You know, yeah. when somebody shows you a lot of money, you know, you, you, you think about your problem, the million problems that you're going through. You know, maybe you've not taken yeah. breakfast, maybe... Ujali parent. Yeah, maybe Ujali parent. 
parent. Forty is a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe you can parent. Maybe you have right. that school fees to pay. Maybe you have that family that you want to support. Mm -hmm. So also that uh, tends to be able. Uh, high cost of living tends to be able to lower us to, to these people. But of course right. also. Also, okay. the way we, our persona, uh, the way we dress also, like, I want to also agree with that because yeah. when somebody looks at me, you know, with a suit and a tie, may, somebody may think, ah, this guy is you working. You got some shmani. Yeah, exactly. You know, I have some, I have some money in my Come pocket. you have, have a fin drop Maybe I have mind, even nothing. In your life, maybe, you have maybe, a crisis. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I thought, I'm going to and I'm going to So yeah. I think uh, uh, those are some of the things that uh, we make us vulnerable to these people. And right. of course, also the the, 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 the also one one key factor also they, they need to be assertive. Sometimes you're not assertive enough. You're not yeah. alert when we are walking in the street. So Cautious when somebody enough. just sees you walking blindly, maybe you're not focused and uh, straightforward. Yeah. It can be able to bounce you, and then you know, it's it's a two three minutes uh, operation, and then you know, when you realize that uh, you have been uh, scammed or you're <laughs> top, I'm telling you, so but the guy is long gone. Yeah. yeah, and and what about what of these people who approach you in salams? They be like, hey, ni aje brother, ni aje sister. Yeah. Like I'm a kujia and I take a kuseli me intentionally to a point you can. Like uh, I, I think at some point I almost given like handshakes upana by the way, cause streets yeah. and less to know Joanna. Yeah. Like somebody approaching you boldly and confidently and I could just shake hands na, like ni aje. So after we shake hands, you feel confused, and and, and it happens to you the Shalin way. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Even, uh, uh, do you do you avoid like shaking hands with people or just ans uh, re responding to careless salams? Niaze, niaze, niaze. I'm somebody signals you from like Moy Avenue. Hey, niaze, sister. Mm -hmm. But they tell me you're walking down towards the uh, senior stage. Mm -hmm. You're already conversing. You're exchanging contacts. You're even planning for a meetup. Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, that is what I said that is what you call target profiling. You know, when somebody comes to you and, and greets you, and of course, all of those people, uh, I, I don't mean to use this word, but of course, those people also beg within the street. Yeah. Some of them, uh, they are, the, are not they, genuine. They are not genuine. They are not the yeah. real people. So when they come to you and tell you, oh, uncle, I've not taken breakfast, can you give me 50 shillings? And then genuinely, when you give them money, so they, they like see what you have. They are tra profiling you. So what do you have? And then when you give him that particular five shillings or that 50 shillings, yeah. you walk away. And unfortunately, I've come to realize that these people don't operate alone. Yeah. This person may come to you and tell you, Uncle, I've not, uh, I've not taken some breakfast in the morning. I'm an ask you, and you give him 50 shillings. Kumbe, there's somebody else watching, watching you yeah. uh, just across the road. Yeah. So that at the end of the day, to know that if you have money or if you don't have money. Right. So this is what the, the target profiling looks like. And of course, uh, I don't really, like what you've said, I don't really engage people who I, I don't, uh, I don't uh -huh. know. I don't shake people, especially with the covenant protocol. I just try to be with me, me. I keep yeah. my things safe. In fact, my phone is always in my coat, in my funga coat. And yeah. I, I discourage also giving money. Uh, Hundreds like, and uh, I'm up like, like to lunch. But now people are going like in form of groups. My brother, or Willy, or yeah. Tattoo. I'm gonna na congelate side, I'm gonna na congelate side, I'm gonna congelate. Yeah. I think at some point it happened to me when I was interning uh, somewhere else, mm. and I had a laptop and everything on my backpack, but thank God I never lost any. <laughs> mm. Like, we wanna congelate, we wanna congelate, kidogo traffic in Akuja. This one blocks you, this one starts to pickpocket you. Exactly. At the end of the day, you, they end up like uh, leaving you with nothing. I don't know if you've met such shilling, like somebody, like two, three people talking to you at the same time on the street. No. Yeah. That one was like, it, it was like once in a blue moon, you learned your lesson. Are you extra cautious now? Like when you walk on the streets, are you like watching people's faces? Yeah. <laughs> even a person coming, uh, approaching you from uh, the front and even at the back, left, right. <laughs> yeah, it's actually weird because a week after, someone yeah. else t uh, tried to use another trick to con you. To con you. Yeah. Still in the streets. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, how did this happen, this one, second one? Uh, <laughs> I hope you called 9-11 this time round. <laughs> no, no, this one was so funny, actually. Uh -huh. uh, this man just approached me and he was like, uh, Sasa, madam, nime, uh, I'm from, I don't know if it was Kakamega, somewhere in Western. Yeah. Uh, ati, Accent here, Louis yeah, or Sewingo. Yeah. <laughs> ati, nime shinda, like a lot or something like that yeah. and I'm here to pick my money from cooperative bank might you know where it is and literally yeah. you can see the bank from where we are standing oh. so I'm telling him you can just go and mm. he tells me no there are people who are following me they mm. want to snatch the they want to take the ticket from me so that they can go and take the money yeah so I'm like um, uh, mm. I don't know if I can help you because there was a security guard next to us. So I told him, you can just go and ask him. And he said, no, 
I don't want to go there. I do like so many excuses. Yeah. Uh, so he was like, please help me. I'll divide the money. Just the same thing that the other oh one Oh my said. goodness. Yeah, I'll divide did you give the him, money. Did you give it a second thought where you were like, nope. You are taking me to hell and I was there and I will not let you this time around. Yeah, but <laughs> are you like conversation done? No, I said let you me continued see, let me with the conversation. What, has to say today. Yeah. <laughs> what is over <laughs> you? <laughs> so, uh, I thought like you'd be like, nope, we can't. In fact, we are not talking. Bye. No, but yeah. you know, when, when you stay there, when I learn the new tricks so uh -huh. that you go and warn your friends or something like that. Uh -huh. So he tells me. So you gave it a chance. Yeah. I'm okay. going to divide the money and stuff like that. And then I was uh -huh. like, okay. Uh, then he, he called someone from the bank. And I'm telling you, if you heard that voice, like it's someone, the it's like English was so the perfect. Teller, like, hi, yeah. welcome to the counter. Are you ready for this service? Uh, something like it, that. No, it was not from my teller. It was just someone from like the a office. Bank manager yeah, office. yes. Yeah. And he was a okay. young person. So he was talking so fluently, like, Haunge kwana any suspicions. Mm -hmm. So um, he called and he's like, uh, hi, could you help this man? He needs to take his money, but there are people following him. Yeah. At and this I, point, how is this communication to you? You've been given the phone, now you're hearing Amma, he's the yeah. one holding the phone and on loudspeaker. I'm the one talking with the phone, with his oh phone. Oh my goodness. And then he's like, uh, did, uh, did he tell you that he's going to divide the money? Then I said, yeah. Then he was like, come to cooperative uh, second floor, room number two, and get the money. Which avenue was this in town? Uh, Sam Street? No, no, it was not the same street. Uh, uh -huh. Around Kenya Cinema or something. Kenya Cinema Plaza, you said in Onganisha. Yeah, na, yeah. Uh, okay, and said, yeah, in Itwaje. Odeon, is it? Not Odeon. Not there's Odeon. another, uh, there's Kencom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was those sides. So uh, he tells me to go and pick the money from a specific room and something and something. And then I was wow. like, okay, I'll help him. Uh -huh. And then this man is like, Akiuta Barikiwa, hey, you're going to enjoy the money and stuff like that. And then he gets even more weird. He asks me, do you have a bank account? I told mm -hmm. him, no. Ati, uh, are you in school? Then I told him, yeah, I'm in university. Then I don't know, he started lecturing me. How can a university student not have a bank account? And then I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> you're, you're lecturing me because I don't a, have a, a bank, bank account. account. And In fact, I've help. not even requested for mm -hmm. you for your help. You yes, know? and then mm -hmm. he's like, okay, then. Uh, At this point, you're just silent, listening yeah, and yeah, taking I'm just notes. Listening, yeah. Oh, okay. And then he's like, okay, you know, because I can't trust you, leave me with again, your ID, yeah, again, with your ID again, or your again, wallet. Again. And then I told him, what do you want to do with my ID, Ati? No, let's go. At, no, he asked me first, how much do you have in your M Pesa? I told did you, him. Did you I respond? Him, yeah, I told him I have around 2,500, but it's for something else. Uh -huh. Then he tells me, let's go to the M Pesa and then you withdraw the money and you give it to me so that I hold it as you go and take my money from the bank. Ah, at this point, I was getting tired and I was like, the same old chick. So I just told him, Pole Baba, Mime, I can't help you at this point. Just go and take your money. I can't live with my ID. And uh -huh. then he started begging, Aki, Madam, Aki, Nini. So I just left him there. He couldn't have, like flipped, uh, said, I'm calling the DCI. <laughs> or I have an uncle who's just behind here. He's a policeman. In fact, he's a traffic police officer. <laughs> let, let him help you. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 this traffic police officer is my, <laughs> is my brother. And as I said, you want to react. No, the security guard had left so uh -huh. so it was just you and him was, yeah oh so my just goodness. left him there yeah <laughs> I hope I, I hope I hope I hope I hope we you come on get corner like the power the first one had definitely yeah and 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 why is it like these people keep on now targeting you is it because maybe your personality attracts them maybe. or is this a normal <laughs> thing I'm a, you know when people look kind and well put together you're just a, a victim of someone on the street you know I think it's something like that because before he even started talking he started like giving me appraisals oh you look so kind yeah. oh you know all those nice things and then you're like oh maybe i'm an angel sent from god <laughs> to help <laughs> people <Nope. laughs> but now still on that note let's imagine now uh, just a normal person you're randomly walking on the street you're going to work and uh, busy in your mind thinking about work or whatever you're going to do and a person just pops out of the streets and boom they'll be like hi uh, can you help me go pick money i'm like why me 
Yeah. Why should I be your assistant bank man manager just sort of out of the blues on a Monday? Yeah? Did you, have you ever asked yourself that? Yeah, of course I've asked yeah, like, myself several now? times. <laughs> like, why is it always me? Like, should I be wearing a mask to town so that uh -huh. people don't look at my face and assume that I'm nice yeah. or something? Or uh -huh. should I walk, come and make jam or right. something like that? Clenching a bag and, you know. Because I also see people who walk like they want to fight. Yeah. 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 I'm sure I'm not sure I'm not sure. And there's a friend who says, like, he keeps eye contact with every person, male, female. I'm like, bro, are you ready? Are you ready for the bad things in this thing? <laughs> like, keeping eye contact with every person approaching you. For me, I can't, to be honest. Because when I'm angry, I'm too angry. You just don't know, man. You just don't know. So uh, when you told your friends uh, this story, what did they tell you this time around? Were well, they like, no, we need to teach you a lesson? <laughs> yeah, actually, sometimes... Or we need to pray for you Sometimes it's usually embarrassing to tell right. people these stories. For example, the first story, I've never told anyone, anyone. in my family about it because they'll just say, you're stupid. You're stupid, yeah. But they don't know, like... <laughs> Like, yeah, say, just a you away, yeah, yeah. Mm. when you're offered that amount of money, unge kwa we mjinga. So I usually mm. avoid telling people such stories because they'll, they'll assume judge. I'm dumb. Definitely yeah. they'll judge. They'll be like, ah, yeah. oh, you are dumb as hell. But yeah. at the same time, you're just vulnerable. You're just a victim. Yeah. All right. And what of these ones who approach people with nataka ni kuzi sim ni iPhone 11 Pro Max ama 13 ama 14? Ana kwambe ah chuko tu ina 5k. Enyo ni iPhone ina ansho ni vizuri ni nini? The moment una fika nyumbani ni Techno G6 something. As in I don't know what 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 gets into people's minds. I do not buy simu kwa hoka and atembea kwa street. Only kufika nyumbani hata kumbe ni calculator. You know. Calculator sim. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I remember also a case. Uh, that this is my brother's case. Eh? Uh, yeah. My brother went to was going to CBD. He was going after work. He was coming out of CBD. Right. Now, the certain case of phone, a certain guy approached him with a phone, yeah. uh, with an infinix something. I don't know if it's hot or something, but with a phone. Yeah. And then he told him, I want to tell it to you. I want to it to you. Yeah. So you know that phone goes for almost thirty thousand, and then yeah. this guy is offering it to for to you uh, with eight thousand. Mm -hmm. So uh, the deal was very convincing. And then when you, when he gives you the the phone, you like what you've said. You know when you when you click the phone, when you check in the features, it's a very good phone brand. But yeah. of course they, they'll tell you, let me go and package it for you now. You know they yeah. go and then they package. They they normally operate. And my brother when he was telling me, it was actually with an Mpesa. So they go with an Mpesa there. They so they're always near a bank uh, somewhere. Yeah, Chicken where they operate, they, they no. don't operate alone. Smokies. Yeah, area. they don't operate alone. Wow. So they went wow. and then they packaged the phone. And then my, when my brother was given, now the phone was also heavy. And I was like, poor, poor. My brother gave sent them through Mpesa the money. Uh, so my brother when he went on, when you are no kid and sold something in the CBD or moment. So my brother had a bag, he put it in his bag, and then he came home. When he came home, my friend, <laughs> he akitoa simu kwa bag give The phone is a replica of the phone, yeah. but it's not on, definitely. Uh -huh. So when he opened it, it was glued all over. The frame and the screen was glued. So apparently, the heaviness of that particular phone, you know, phone have certain weight to yeah. fill if that phone. So yeah. my brother, when I was na shika shika hivi, kufungua hivi, mashilingi zimeja hapo ndani. Coins. Mashilingi zimeja hapo ndani. <laughs> so apparently, <laughs> he tried going to Mpesa, trying reversing that money, but unfortunately, uh, it was not. It was yeah. not reversible, and uh, we didn't manage to reverse that particular money. But of course, I fall a victim of, of phones uh, of, a, of, a, of that particular con and, and, and scam. Because I think also one one factor that tend to lead uh, a lot of us and youth in, in buying cheap things is that we like cheap things. We like easy yeah, sure. uh, shortcut for success. So yeah. the, the cost cost thirty thousand, but of course somebody is offering it to, to you with eight thousand, and then yeah. you think otherwise. So Ali, ajawai fanai votela. Yeah, I can tell you for a fact. And cheap is expensive. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, I'm being told time is up, guys. I, I feel like we need a session of like just listening. Like there's so many, <laughs> there's so many, uh, there's so many formats of people of how people get conned and scammed in Nairobi. There's even those who come to you in the name of prayer. Yeah. Like you know, God amen yambia. I think we can talk about that in the next uh, in the next episode of MCM. Hopefully, you guys 
we'll be back. Uh, but uh, before we go, definitely you can share social media platforms. <laughs> I feel like we were just getting started <laughs> listening to these juicy stories. So you can share your social media platforms and where people can get to you, holla at you. If you want to say hi to a friend, just less than a minute and then you can do as well. Yeah, that's your camera. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at shell underscore and I'd like to say hi to my fellow comrades in this university. Yeah. All right. Uh, you. Thank you. My name is Ali Idi. Uh, you can follow me on social media all, on all digital platforms. My, my social media handle is uh, Traffics Ali. Traffics Ali on all social media. And I want to say hi to Chairman Kuso and, of course, all of the leaders and, of course, also my dad who is watching. Thank you. All right. And happy Father's Day. <laughs> happy Father's Day that. to you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Happy Father's Day to your dad, too, as well. Uh, you didn't say a message to him. <laughs> all right. All right, thank you guys for coming through. Uh, Shelly Lomondi, uh, communication student at Daystar. Ali Idi from CASA, Secretary General. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you. All right, and we end it here. Thank you so much for keeping us company at Y254 channel on the gram, Facebook, and everywhere else. And mine is a brand, Sakwan One, on that hashtag, which is still Y in the morning. Definitely, we see you tomorrow early in the morning for uh, Entrepreneurship Tuesday, including Health Tuesday as well. In the meantime, have a fantastic Monday.